part two. But that isn't what Obama pledged he would do when he campaigned. He repeatedly vowed that he would do exactly the opposite, that he would reject that kind of thinking and battle aggressively against domination by what he called the interests of the powerful lobbyists or the wealthiest few who have run Washington far too long. And he convinced millions of people that he was serious, people who, as a result, became fervent devotees to his cause. Those are the people who New York Times columnist Frank Rich recently said have been punked by Obama, because it is precisely that same narrow group which continues to be the prime beneficiaries and masters of Washington behavior during the Obama, Obama presidency. More than any p betrayal on a specific issue, it is Obama's seeming eagerness to serve the interests of those who have run Washington for far too long, not as a result of what he has failed to accomplish but as a result of what he has affirmative, affirmatively embraced. That is causing what Krugman called today, describes as a loss of trust in Obama from those who once trusted him the most. This approach is not only producing heinous outcomes, but it is politically self-destructive as well. In a superb post the other day, Digby, over um, on the Digby site, recounted what fueled the Naderite movement in 2000, uh, in the year 2000, and warns that the willingness of Obama slash Manuel so blatantly to disappoint those to whom they promised so much, especially the young and first-time voters, who were most vulnerable to Obama's transformative fairy dust, will lead them either to support a third party or to turn off politics altogether. Ram Emanuel believes that the key to democratic su success, um, and this is also emanating from the Daily Coast site, by the way, uh, is a coalition in which blue dogs and corporate lackeys mitigate progressive change on behalf of the moneyed interests, which he believes the political system must serve, no matter what. Regardless of his... <laughs> Uh, view of how the political system should work on a political level, I think he's living in the past. On the political level, the left has been betrayed over and over again on the things that matter to us most. The village is pleased, I'm sure, but the Democratic Party only needs to look back eight short years to see just how destructive it is to constantly tell their left flank to take a hike. Or as uh, Greenwald says, to go fuck themselves. This is a huge issue, my friends. And the overall mistrust um, regarding the United States government coming both from the left and from the right, is well um, established at this point. And it can only serve the elites in power. At the time in 2002, nobody believed that an incumbent vice president and a roaring economy would have a race so close that the Republicans could steal it. But we know differently now, don't we? And you would think that the Democratic establishment would have also have known that because of that, it may not be a good idea to alienate anybody on the left to, <coughs> to the point where they become apathetic or even, well, hmm, you know, 
support a third party. It can happen. It did happen. <laughs> Why the Democrats insist in believing that it cannot happen is simply beyond me. Obama mobilized a whole lot of young people who have great expectations and disappointing them could lead to all sorts of unpleasant results. Success is about more than simply buying off some few congressional liberals or pleasing the village. It's worth remembering that a third party run from the left is what created the conditions for eight long years of Republican governments that pretty much fucked up the entire country. And I can guarantee you pretty much this is precisely what's going to happen again. The handwriting is on the wall. And it's not so much that uh, the left can ever agree with the right. It is a complete distrust in uh, in our government, uh, government and entities who spread continuous lies uh, back and forth, both from the right and from the left. Part three to follow.